I've always loved sport. Sport is great fun for me. And uh, at a certain point, I wasn't having uh, fun anymore with the pentathlon. And I wanted to keep doing something which uh, gave me the same feelings that uh, professional sport gave to me until a certain point. What about the ultra marathon, though, was it that attracted you? Why was it that that would give you the same feeling that you'd had from sport before? What I like most about ultra marathons or extreme marathons is the fact that you come into contact with nature. You see beautiful natural scenarios such as the Alps or glaciers, deserts. Well, let's talk then in particular about the Marathon des Sables in the Sahara Desert. It's, it's believed to be the toughest foot race in the world. It's 156 miles, 251 kilometers in 100 degrees Fahrenheit heat. Uh, what is it about that challenge that drew you to it? I was drawn to the Marathon de Sable completely by chance. One day a friend mentioned it to me and I said, yeah, why not? At that moment in time, I had never seen the desert before. So it was a new environment for me as well. But uh, I started training very well for that marathon. And indeed I trained very well because before I got lost I was uh, among the first runners. But what did your wife think about you taking part in the Marathon des Sables? <laughs> My wife has never been a spanner in the works for me. She never prevented me from doing uh, ultra marathons. In that particular uh, case, she was uh, worried also because I had and still have three children. But I tried to reassure her. I said to her, you know, we are uh, monitored. There is no danger. The worst that can happen to me is that I get a bit sunburned. Well, that wasn't the worst thing that could happen to you because everything was going well at first. But on the fourth day, a sandstorm hit you. Tell me what it was like when that sandstorm blew up. When we started, there was already a bit of wind. And between the fourth and the fifth checkpoints, there were some uh, small dunes of sand. And the dunes can be very dangerous. They can cover you. I was alone at that moment. So what I did was I crouched and I tried to stay where I was, uh, waiting for the storm to come to an end and trying to protect myself as best as I could. Give me a sense of the power of the storm and how long it went on for. When the storm starts, you are faced with a wall, a yellow wall of sand. And the sand is so strong that it whips your face. Bear in mind that I was in a, my T-shirt and in shorts and I had to put a scarf on my face to protect it. So once the storm died down, did you realize immediately that you were lost? No, no, absolutely no. You know. The storm lasted eight hours. When it ended, I didn't realize that I was lost. I was only sorry because the storm prevented me from running my race as best as I could. But it was night when the storm faded out. And um, I decided, OK, I'll, I'll sleep a few hours and very early in the morning I'll uh, start again. But presumably the storm had changed the landscape. Did you have any way of telling which direction you were going to go in? Did you have a compass with you? I didn't realize how dramatically the landscape around me had changed. So I did have a compass. I had a map as well. I started uh, running again and I was alone. I couldn't find anybody, but I wasn't worried because I thought sooner or later I'll meet someone. I'm sure there are so many people in my same situation, but running and running, I didn't meet anyone. And I understood that the situation was worse than what I originally thought. So there must have come a time when you realized that you were hopelessly lost. How did you set about dealing with that problem? The first thing I did was urinating in a bottle because the first time the urine is the cleanest and it's more drinkable. I did it just out of precaution. I thought that the organization was looking for me. But did you have some food? 
In terms of food, I had uh, a lot of dehydrated products and snacks, but I only had half a bottle of water. And uh, because I had uh, dehydrated products, I couldn't eat them. Did you get any sign of a search going on? Did you catch any glimpse of a rescue attempt? The second day that I was lost, I saw a helicopter. It was searching for me, but the helicopter couldn't spot me. But you kept walking, and eventually, I think you took refuge on the fifth day in a small Muslim shrine. What did you do there? After a couple of days that I got lost, I found this uh, Muslim shrine. There are um, temples where uh, Bedouins stop when they cross the desert. There was nobody, there was only uh, a dead man in a coffin. But at least I got some shadow and I could have a, a shelter. I stayed there for uh, some days. At certain point I saw some bats. I ate them raw. I realized I was turning into a caveman. You say you ate the bats raw. How did you catch them and kill them? In this uh, Muslim shrine, there was a two-story tower. So I decided to put an Italian flag on the tower just in case someone was looking for me, they could see it. And while uh, climbing the tower, I was seeing that there were some bats entering the shrine from that tower. I took a handful of bats and I killed them with my knife. I cut them open and basically suck whatever I could uh, suck from inside. I was doing to them what they do to their praise. As time wore on, I think your spirits went down and you became more depressed. I believe at one point you even decided to take your own life. Can you tell me what happened? I gave in to despair only twice in those days. One was when I saw the helicopter, but the helicopter didn't see me. And the other one was after a few days when I was in the Muslim shrine, when I saw an airplane. I don't know if it was looking for me or not, but uh, I burned whatever I could burn to uh, make some black smoke. And still, the airplane didn't spot me. And I thought, uh, maybe this means that I don't have to be saved, I don't have to be rescued, maybe that's my destiny. When I decided to take my own life, I did it not because I was desperate, but because I was thinking of my family. I said to myself, if I die in the desert, no one will find me. But I was uh, dehydrating and I fell asleep and the following morning I woke up and the wounds were uh, dry and I didn't manage to kill myself. So I thought maybe my destiny at the end of the day is not to die in the desert. Maybe I can make it. So how did you finally manage to get help? I kept surfing uh, through the desert. Towards the ninth day, I found a small oasis and I start sipping water for uh, six or seven hours. And after I kept walking and I started uh, seeing some goats and where there are goats, there are shepherds. And I saw this uh, shepherd girl and that was it. I understood I was safe. What did the girl do when she saw you coming? The girl was scared by me. So she ran into her tent to warn the women of her tribe. And they took care of me immediately. They were so kind. They gave me goat milk to drink. They tried to give me some food. I uh, threw it up and uh, they brought me to the Moroccan police. At the beginning, uh, they didn't know who I was, so they started taking me from place to place blindfolded. They uh, weren't sure whether I was dangerous or not. After they gathered some information, they realized I was uh, the marathon runner who was lost, so they celebrated. They didn't blindfold me anymore. And um, 
I was uh, taken to a safe place where I finally, after 10 days, could call my wife. How, how bad was your physical condition at the end of your ordeal? I had some problems in both eyes. I couldn't eat anything uh, more than uh, soups or uh, liquids for months after that adventure. I lost uh, some 16 kilos. And as if that wasn't enough, four years later you decided to enter the race again. Some people are going to say you were mad to do that. What made you want to take it up again and go back into the desert? When I start something, I want to finish it. So I decided to run it again. I ran it and I finished it. Another aspect to it is that I can't live without the desert. The desert fever does exist. You're quite a one for adventures. I gather that your next challenge is to sail around Sicily in a canoe. Um, and then you're going to try and cross the Sahara Desert, 7,000 kilometers from Agadir on the Atlantic Ocean to Hergada on the Red Sea. He knows that I am what I am. I am a man of the world. I am a man of nature. I am a man on a mission. If you want, I can't change, and people have to accept me for what I am. Mi, mi, mi dedico anche a questo.